again. And on that note, it's great to have back Congresswoman Diana Black from Tennessee's 6th Congressional District. How are you doing, Congresswoman? I'm great, Lars. It's great to be with you this evening. Uh, it is great to have you back on, and you're on one of my favorite topics. Just two weeks ago, I had to stop at the gun, sto a gun store. Uh, there was a, a, a gun I uh, got out of state, and it had to be transferred legally, and I had to fill out a 4473. And literally, Congressman, not even knowing you and I would, uh, Congresswoman, not even knowing you and I would be talking about this, I got through the whole form and I said, I think it's done. And my favorite gunsmith said, no, no, you missed a box. And I said, which one? He said, the one for ethnicity. And, I, and, and, and then I looked at him and it was just like, he knew what I was thinking and I knew what he was thinking. It was like, why do I have to tell the government what my ethnicity is to buy a gun? And now you're working, you along with a few other members, are working to try to get rid of that requirement. Tell us about that. Absolutely. We discovered this a few months. Actually, last year we discovered it and had a bill last year, and um, we didn't have time to fully have it go through the process last year, so we refiled it again this year. And what we found was, back in 2012, this box was added to this Form 4473. And our question is, why? Because you really should not have to play 40 questions and tell your race or your ethnicity in order to exercise your Second Amendment right um, to bear arms, keep and bear arms. And so we said, why is this happening? It doesn't need to happen. In addition to that, Lars, what we were hearing is that um, those who own these uh, gun shops were saying this is really a, a difficulty for them because just as you did, you did not – think you needed to fill in that particular um, box. Right. And if the ATF comes in to audit that uh, gun dealer, they can either pen give them a penalty, which is a rather large penalty. Mark Wayne Mullins told me about one that happened pretty recently back in his state, uh, that the gun owner, shop, shop owner, was fined $15,000 because yep. they found one form without that box being filled in and they put you on on some kind of probation after that then you get checked more often you have to waste more time was this added as an administrative rule without going through congress absolutely it was added back in 2012 and we're not sure why and frankly the atf cannot answer why they blame it on the office of management and budget omb says that they didn't order it it wasn't something they declared that needed to be put on there so the question is why why is it put on there um i can speculate you can speculate oh yeah i know she doesn't like guns is it <laughs> a way that they can close down these shops, they can penalize them, they can also close them down. Um, that's a speculation on my part, but it's a pretty good speculation. And since there is not a reason for this, there um, we shouldn't have to tell our race and our ethnicity to get a gun. We don't have to do that to exercise our right of speech or our right to the freedom of religion. And neither should we have to do it in this case. The government should be colorblind when it comes to exercising our rights. You don't think maybe we could get the Obama administration to admit that it is bigoted to start asking people the color of their skin or the kind of ethnicity in order to buy a firearm and shame them into it? You, you, don't, you don't think that's very <laughs> likely, do you? Well, there have actually been some reporters and some talk show hosts who wanted me to go in that direction. Again, I don't want to speculate about why they did this but, or that it is racist, but I think when you have a box of ethnicity and they only give you two choices there, you're either Hispanic or non-Hispanic. Hmm, boy, that <laughs> sounds like maybe that's a little racist, doesn't it? I would think so, too. I mean, that means somebody who's Asian or black has to say they're non-Hispanic, although I guess you could have black Hispanics and Asian Hispanics, too. But the whole, the whole thing seems kind of goofy to me. Uh, any chance you think a bill would get through that would prohibit the agency from doing that? Well, we have 52 um, sponsors on our bill at this current point in time. We're continuing to work on that because our leadership generally wants to see about 100 people that have sponsored something before they move it forward. Um, but I am proud to say that Senator Blunt in the uh, Senate has picked this bill up, so we do have a Senate sponsor as well. But what we have done is last week the CJS appropriations bill uh, was on the floor. We were able to put an amendment on that bill that would actually say that no funds could be um, used to enforce this particular provision, which we would come at it from another end to say that you can't use funds for an ATF agent to go out and audit a um, gun shop owner 
and um, either find them or take their shop away from them. So that's one direction to come, and that actually passed by a voice vote on the floor. Now it goes to the Senate, but we're not going to stop there because then you'd have to do it year after year. When you put it on appropriations bill, it's not a permanent measure. You'd have to come back next year and do it again. So we're still working hard to get enough sponsors that we can have this as a freestanding bill and bring it forward. Well, ma'am, keep up the great work. We really appreciate it, especially those of us who've had to fill the form out recently. Because <laughs> I just I found it insulting and stupid and none of the government's business. Thank you so much. You are so welcome, Lars. Always happy to talk with you.